All right, today we are looking at the Dark Flash DLV22. We are doing a build with me kind of video. So we're gonna go through this build together. I'm gonna to show you guys what it's like building inside of this case. This is from Dark Flash. It's $170, I believe, off of AliExpress. But the thing that's very special about this case is that it is mounted to be on the left side of your desk. There are a couple of cases which come stock on the right side but have the modularity to go over to the left, but this comes right out of the box on being on the left side. Now this is probably blurry in here, but the way the motherboard mounts is that it mounts over against this wall right over here. So it's going to be a little bit different of a perspective and we're going to look into that today and I'm very excited, so let's get into it. All right, so here I have the Arctic A13X. This comes available for both platforms for AMD and Intel. The reason why I'm showing you guys this is because this is a $28 cooler from Arctic. And Arctic has a very good track record of making good coolers. It comes with pre-applied thermal paste. It's very easy to set up. For AMD installation, you literally have a peg that goes in and then you have your bracket and then you top it off with a thumb screw on top. And then you bolt down the cooler down to the brackets. It's very easy. It's a very simple cooler. It's for, it's for those of you who are looking for a budget alternative. And I just wanted to show you guys this, even though it doesn't really suit the build that I'm doing here, which is more of a expensive build, at least the cases at $170. There should be performance on all spectrums of the market, and that's what Arctic is really good at doing. Hopefully, if you guys are looking for a more budget alternative cooler that's under $30, this could be a great go-to, especially for its form factor and how small it is. Could be good for small form factor builds as well. Now, we are just getting ourselves familiar with the case. Up top, we have our front I.O., nothing special. We have two USB 3.0 ports, headphone jacks, reset and a power button, Nothing too crazy, but over here, this is where this pops off, and this is where our GPU and the rear I.O. will be facing. So it's a little bit different from what we're usually used to, but that's gonna make it very interesting. And there's also a dust filter up top over here to filter out that dust that would be settling into your I.O. port. So I guess that's pretty good. Now over here, this is where the airflow will be coming in for the GPU, which is really interesting. We have more than an intro here, maybe two, two and a half inches on each side of mesh clearance for air to come through. So it seems like a decent amount of space for air to come through. And this does remove by just pulling at the front panel, just like so. We also have screws on the back over here. I'm not sure if that's gonna be in focus, but we have screws over here if you wanna take this plastic frame out from the metal frame over here. Also looks like we have another dust filter over here comes out as a magnetic door and you just unhinge just like that so it's a pretty interesting mounting method for all your fans or radiators over here I'm I believe this supports up to a 360 mil radiator over here now it looks like we do have some plastic to protect the tempered glass and it looks like the caution sticker is on the plastic so I am very appreciative of that this is also magnetic a little tab to pull on but there is actually tape over here that it comes pre-packaged with it keeps the door from sliding out also i just want to uh, make note of that there was no styrofoam in the packing it was all just i don't know regular foam i don't know what they call it but good stuff i was pleased with the packaging so this comes out and you can unhinge it at the very end now if you notice it looks like we'll be mounting our psu right over here on the bottom just like always so there's no shroud because the way we're gonna have to wire things uh it would get in the way if we had a shroud and for the back of the case the rear of the case looks like we have a rubber grommet here to feed all of our cables to the rear io which i like to see i'll keep that nice and tidy and we have two screws i believe these are both capped or captive whichever one you like yep looks like that and uh this doesn't really hinge out does it so it kind of slides out doesn't really hinge out too much just be careful not to bend up the back panel too much in case you are trying to unhinge it. You can see that my thumbnail goes about to where the uh, clearance ends for all the cables back here. So maybe three quarters of an inch, maybe almost an inch back here. Um, we also have mounting for SSDs in the back over here as well as hard drive cages. Now over here you'll see mounting for two SSDs. Pretty standard over here, you just unscrew over here 
and you screw in to where the screw holes are over here. And for the hard drive cage, it looks like we have a slot over here for one three and a half inch and another for a three and a half inch on top of this. The case is actually fairly lightweight. Considering how rigid the structure is, I thought it would be heavier. And for the accessories, it's looking pretty good here. Everything seems to be individually wrapped in its own plastic bag with printed labels or printed text onto each little plastic baggie. So I like seeing that. Makes it a little bit easier for distinction when building inside this case. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is install the motherboard here. So the top of the motherboard is going towards the back of the case and the rear IO is going towards the top over here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go install the motherboard. All right, so we've ran into issue number one. We cannot, or me, not we, I don't know who we is. I cannot get the rear IO shield in for the life of me without bending the case. So for some reason, the fitment is just too tight and no matter how hard I try, I'm gonna end up bending the rear IO shield or the case, which I already have. And the problem is over here, this, this piece of metal, this wall bends really easy as you can see snap that back into place there but since the rear io is facing towards the top of the case i don't really care i don't care if there's an io shield there it just protects it from dust mostly and any other debris but since there's already a dust filter and a whole entire mesh piece on top i don't really have to worry about that it's already going to protect the rear io so that does serve its purpose and kind of redeems itself but this this should be fixed. All right, motherboard installed, no issues there. What I would do next, if I had hard drives or SSDs, I would do that next. But since I don't, I just, I'm just using an NVMe drive here, so that's why I'm not using anything else externally. Um, I am going to do the PSU before I do the cooler. Uh, reason being, it's gonna be a water cooler. I believe it's a, yeah, it's a 240 millimeter cooler, and it's gonna go on the back of the case over here. Now, I believe you could put it towards the front over here, but you might be potentially blocking the cable routing over here for the bottom of the motherboard. So I would just keep that in mind. But the way the airflow works in this case, essentially what happens is you have fans coming in over here. The GPU takes in that air, expels it, and the exhaust happens towards the back over here. So GPU first, CPU second kind of thing uh, in, in terms of where the airflow is getting pushed towards in that direction. All right, so this actually tidies up pretty nicely. We have our front IO cables over here that have all appropriate cutouts for, and we also have our EPS or CPU power connector over here. That is the easiest EPS power connection I've ever had. It's usually like obscured and all the way in the back and you're trying to get it and it's just a real pain, um, especially if you're working around a giant CPU cooler. The lip over here, I know it's a little bit out of frame, but the lip actually comes up high enough that it, it covers the PSU and kind of gives a clean look to the rest of the PC, even though there's no actual top piece of the shroud over here. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is install the fans on the front over here, and then secondly, we'll install the CPU cooler. All right, I just got done installing the cooler. In terms of clearance, there's a fantastic amount of clearance between the top of the motherboard here and the radiator plus the fans. So I can still plug things in even with the fans and radiator installed, which is really nice to have. The only thing that wasn't great was the cooler itself. Now this is Dark Flash's Symphony TR240, and it was an absolute pain to install this, this water block on. So I finished putting in the fans over here as well as the GPU, and I've done some cable management. Now I understand why you can't really have a shroud here. Well, you need all your PCIe slots open in case you, for instance, did two GPUs, three GPUs, four GPUs, however many GPUs, you would need this whole entire bank open where the PCIe slots are. So altogether, it would be really hard to have any sort of rigid structure that would only take up this little bit over here that would be the top part of the PSU shroud. Now, if you look down into the case, you're gonna notice that there's a bunch of wires everywhere but 
if you're sitting this on your desk, you're not really going to pay attention and notice that because your eye level would probably not make it over the top where you could see all the cables. So it's a little bit of mixed feelings for me. However, that is part of the compromise that you're going to get with having a motherboard mounted in this kind of fashion so that you can have it on the left hand side. All right, they have uh, plenty of tie down points over here, all the way from over here and over here, probably for the SATA connectors coming from the SSDs over here. Now this rear wall does bend and flex quite a bit for $170 is a bit questionable to me. Another couple things to keep in mind is that for the GPU, if you have only the hard drive cage installed, you're gonna be able to fit a, a triple fan GPU cooler in here. However, if you have two HDDs or two hard drives, stacked on one of each other, like I was showing you guys earlier, you're not gonna be able to fit a three fan GPU, at least I don't think. And that, that maximum is 291 millimeters. And if you only have the hard drive cage in there, it's gonna be 318 millimeters. Now, if you remove the hard drive cage and you don't have any hard drives whatsoever, you're gonna be able to fit a couple more millimeters on there. And then for CPU tower height, it only goes to 167 millimeters. Now. That is probably part of the compromise here that you get with building in a case like this. Now, I do like the aesthetic of the case. I think it looks good. I think the outside panels are nicer than the interior panels, at least in terms of rigidity. The coating is nice. Um, everything else is pretty, pretty nice quality. The back panel fit on fine, even though I thought there was going to be some sort of issues and clearance in terms of having all those wires bundled up together. At $170, there's not a lot that comes with this case. It has dust filters. Yes, it checks the box there. It looks like it has decent airflow on the sides over here. I just don't know if I would pay $170 for it. Now it is a unique case and you're probably paying for some of the engineering that went into this. There, there are parts where it's just like slightly bent here and there and it's just like, I don't know, at $170, it's questionable. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. All the products will be listed down in the description below in case you are interested. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.